about electric force, which is um, present between two charged particles, and it's measured in newtons. And then we talked about, okay, so if you just take one charged particle, it can exert a force on other charged particles, whether or not the other charged particles there or not. And we call that the electric field that surrounds the charged particle. It's measured in newtons per coulomb. And finally, we talked about electric potential energy, that because there is an electric field around a charge, that if another charge moves in that field, it will either lose or gain electric potential energy. And remember that forces in electric fields are vectors. So when you add them together, you have to take into account that they have magnitude and direction. You have to add components and find magnitude and direction using components uh, and tan theta. But when you talk about potential energy, energy is a scalar. You either have it or you don't. It doesn't matter whether, what direction you're moving in, but it does matter whether or not you're losing or gaining that type of energy depending on the direction that you move in the field. If the particle moves in the direction of the field lines, it will, if, and let's just clarify this, if the particle, meaning a test charge, a positive test charge, moves in the direction of the field, it will lose potential energy. And if it moves against the direction of the field, it will gain potential energy. So just like electric force, um, has a quantity called electric field that exists around charged particles. Um, there's also something like that relative to potential energy, and it is called the electric potential. And the electric potential is measured in volts. And a volt is a joule per coulomb. So imagine that you have this charged particle here. And it's got an electric field pointing away from it because it's positive. And you want to move a charge from point A to point B. So in, when you do that, when you move it, because it's moving in the direction of field, it's going to lose potential energy. So the potential energy at point A is greater than the potential energy at point B. And so it will be losing potential energy, which means that there's been work done on it. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you, whether there's a charge there or not, anything that moves from, any charge that moves from point A to point B will lose a certain amount of potential energy. So just like we can talk about the electric field exists around this charge, whether there's a charge there or not, we can say that if you move from point A to point B in this field, along the field line, there will be a change in potential energy. Every coulomb will experience a certain gain or loss of potential energy. And that is called the electric potential of, of the field. So the electric potential is at a certain location and the electric potential difference is the difference between the potential at those two, between those two points, A and B. And so voltage is, is symbolized by a B and it's gonna be measured in joules per coulomb or volts. And if we just use dimensional analysis, it is the electric potential energy at that point divided by the charge at that point. So it's the potential energy per unit charge of a test particle. And it is a scalar, so it has nothing to do with um, direction right now. If we talk about a change in potential energy, that would be the difference between the, the electric potential at point B minus the electric potential at point A. So we're going to talk about that in a little more detail now. So the electric potential at a point is going to be equal to whatever the electric potential energy is divided by the charge at that location. And remember that the electric potential energy at a point is K, big Q, Q naught, all over R. And we're gonna divide that in our formula by Q naught. So we can derive that the electric potential energy at any point is K, Q, all over R. 
So if we take point A and point B, and we talk about the potential, the electric potential at point A, it would be KQ all over the distance to point A, and the electric potential at B would be KQ all over the distance to B, and so the difference in voltage between those, those two points would be VB minus VA, which would be KQ all over RB minus KQ all over RA. And if you rearrange that, you get this formula here, KQ times 1 over RB all over 1 over RA. So let's say that we want to talk about a proton. And that proton, we're going to move something from 2 centimeters to 6 centimeters. If we want to find the potential at, at those locations and then the change in potential moving from A to B, our delta V would be 8.99 e to the 9 newtons meters squared all over coulomb squared times the charge of a proton which if you remember is 1.6 e to the negative 19 coulombs, times 1 over 6 centimeters, or 0 0.06 meters, everything needs to be in meters, minus 1 over Ra, which is 1 over 0 0.02 meters. If we put that in our calculator, and so in parentheses, we're going to have 0 0.06 1 over minus 0 0.02, 1 over, in parentheses, we're going to multiply it by 1.6 exponent negative 19 times 8.99 exponent 9. And we're going to get negative 4.79 e to the negative 8. So our change in voltage would be negative 4.79 e to the negative 8 volts or joules per coulomb. So what that means is that if we move this this if we move from point A to point B near this proton, we're going to lose this much potential energy, but we at the same time will be gaining that much kinetic energy. So the negative means that we've lost that much. And it makes sense because if you look at that proton, we're moving it in, in the direction of the field. So what if this was a electron? If this were an electron, the charge on the electron now, so this would be a negative Q, and our field, instead of pointing towards it, would be going towards it, going towards. So if we move from A to B, notice that the field lines are pointing towards the negative charge, but when we go to A to B, remember, we would be moving away from the field, against the field, in the opposite direction. And if that's the case, then we should expect there to be, instead of a loss of potential energy, we should be gaining potential energy. It should be harder to do that. So once again, our delta V is going to be KQ, 8.99 e to the 9 newtons meters squared all over coulomb squared times negative 1.6 e to the negative 19 coulombs because we're dealing with an electron now times 1 over 0 0.06 meters minus 1 over 0 0.02 meters. If we put that in the calculator, instead of getting negative 4.79 e to the negative 8 volts, we're going to get a positive, which means that moving in the direction opposite e, we gain potential energy, right? Because this is really how many joules every coulomb is going to gain because it's a positive number. Now, if we're going to gain potential energy, how do we do that? Well, on Earth, if we pick something up and give it gravitational energy, it's because we've done work on it, right? So the work done on it is equivalent to that change in energy. And specifically, it's 
equivalent to the negative change in energy. Okay, the negative change of, let's just review uh, conservation of energy. We talked about the work kinetic energy theorem. The work done moving something causes it to gain kinetic energy. But if you gain kinetic energy, you must lose potential energy. So, um, if we think about what voltage is, voltage or electric potential at any point is the potential energy per unit coulomb at that location. And the change in voltage is the change in potential energy. And for moving in the field, it is going to be the loss of potential energy per unit charge. So that means that um, we can derive an equation that relates work and the charge that we're moving and voltage. So voltage is equal to, if we're moving in the direction of the electric field, the negative change of potential energy divided by the charge that we're moving. Now, but let's say we're not, we don't know what that charge is that we're moving. We're just talking about what happens as we go from point A to point B along that field line. Well, then we would want to use this side of the equation. So it turns out that um, work is going to be equal to the electric force times the distance that we move that charge, right? The change, I'll just call it the change in R. And we know that in order to find Fe, we have to know both charges. But let's say we're not, we don't know what that Q naught is. We don't know what the charge is at point A and point B, but we do know what big Q is. We also know that the electric field is the ratio of the electric force to Q naught. And If we don't know what F, if we don't know what both the charges are, we could find um, Fe using this um, equation. Fe equals whatever the electric field is times Q naught. And remember, Q naught is the charge that we're moving. So we could put this into our equation here that V is equal to F times delta R. Well, F is EQ not times delta R all over Q. Um, and, and this is going to simplify out to a, an easier um, equation. So let's talk about that. Now, one thing that we do need to note is that when you have a point charge like this, the force, this force is not constant, right? Because the closer you are to the charge, the more traction a positive charge would have to this negative charge, and the further away, the less attraction it'll have. So let's consider a scenario where the, where the force is constant. So the force will be constant when the electric field is constant. If you remember when we talked about electric fields, we said that if the field lines are equally spaced, then the electric field is constant. So the one way that you can achieve that is by taking two parallel plates and separating them and charging one side positive and one side negative. And this is what we commonly call a parallel plate capacitor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create this constant electric field, which exerts a constant electric force. And that means that as the charge moves from point A to point B to the other side, from one plate to the other, through the distance between the plates, that it's going to lose a certain amount of potential energy and it will gain a certain amount of kinetic energy. And that is going to be done by the work 
exerted by the electric field moving that charge, right? Because there's an electric field there. That's why the charge is moving. If I let go of that test charge, it's going to naturally want to flow in the direction of the electric field because the electric field is exerting a force on it through a distance, which by definition is work. So that field is going to be exerting a constant force. And so we can use that formula for work, which is force times the distance that it that it's applied. And we talked about this in last semester that work is the force that you apply parallel to the displacement of the, of the um, object. So we can actually simplify this equation out. Remember, the change in, in voltage is equal to the work divided by the charge at that location. And the work is equal to the electric force which is E times Q naught divided by um, Q naught times delta X, where delta X is the distance that you're moving it. So we can actually simplify this out. So remember, what we're doing here is we're, assist we're assuming a constant electric field and thus a constant electric force. If the force is changing, then we have to use calculus to calculate this, and this formula wouldn't work. Um, it would only work for one instant, and then the next little incre increment that it moves, the force is different, and you have to add all those up and do an interval. We don't need to do that here. So delta V can also be found by taking the electric field and multiplying it by the um, change in um, position. So, and it's equal to the negative, right? Because you're going to be losing potential energy in this particular case when you move in the direction of the field. So let's take an example. What is the potential difference between these two charged plates? I know what E is and I know what the um, distance is between them. The potential energy is going to be equal to negative E delta X which is going to be equal to negative 5,000 newtons per coulomb times 0.02 meters, which is going to be equal to negative 100 newton meters all over coulombs, which is a joule per coulomb, which is a volt. So the voltage, if I were to take a volt probe and measure the voltage here, the voltage is negative 100 volts or joules per coulomb. Let's do another one. So we have a lightning bolt and it's going to strike a tree. Okay. And we know that the charge that's moving through it, Q naught, is 15.5 C and it's moving through a um, a voltage of 180 megavolts, which is 180 e to the 6 volts. So we've got to make sure that everything is in coulombs and volts. So we want to know what the energy is. So we have two equations, right? We have delta V equals negative uh, work all over delta uh, all over Q naught, or we have delta V equals E, negative E times Q naught. So which one do we want to use? Okay, first of all, um, let's talk about this. Um, this lightning charge is moving uh, towards the surface of the earth because it is moving in the direction of the field. And so it's going to be losing potential electric potential energy and gaining speed. And so we want to, we know that we want to know the energy. Well, work is energy, and we know what the charge is, and we know what Q naught is. So this would be the best equation, right? This one would be the one to use. And if we rearrange it, we're going to get um, negative work equals delta V all over Q naught. Oops, sorry, I just messed that up. If we rearrange this uh, for work, work is going to be equal to 
negative delta V times Q naught. So that's going to be negative 180e to the 6 joules per coulomb times 15.5 coulombs. And that's going to give us 180x, oops, 180 exponent 6 times 15.5 c's or 2.79 e to the 9 joules. So that is our work. That's how much energy. And so what that means is that it's going to lose that much energy. What is the strength in volts per meter of an electric field between two parallel plates that are separated? So we know that delta X is 0.1, uh, it's 1.7 centimeters or 0 0.0170 meters. And we know that the voltage delta V is equal to 2.55 E to the 4 volts. And we want to know the electric field. So the equation we're going to use is delta V equals negative E delta X. And we're going to look for E, which is going to be negative delta V all over delta X. And so that's going to be negative 2.55 E to the 4 volts divided by 0 0.0170 meters. 2.55 exponent 4 four divided by 0 0.017 equals negative 1.5 e to the 6. Volts per meter. Now that's also joules. So let's talk about how we know that. A volt is a joule per coulomb and a joule is a newton meter times uh, divided by coulombs. And so if we multiply a Newton meter by a coulomb and we, and we divide it by a meter, the meters go away and we get Newtons per coulomb. And I just messed up my units there. So my electric field is Newtons per coulomb or volts per meter. Let's just do a summary real quick of our units to make sure we're on the right track. So force is measured in Newtons. Electric field is measured in Newtons per coulomb or volt per meter. And potential energy is measured in joules, which is also a Newton meter. And voltage is measured in volts or joules per coulomb or newton meters per coulomb.